The age of large PCs is coming to an end. This is the Intel NUC 13, and it's gonna be a key feature here at the production we do here at UFD Tech. Because not long ago, I gave our pal Reese, who just recently reviewed the iNeo 2, a Windows handheld. And he made the commitment that if he could exclusively switch to Windows 11 for two weeks, he would ditch his Mac entirely. And after two weeks of that Mac mini just sitting as a replacement for a fancy Apple TV, he is ready to make the full switch. And that's where today's video sponsor Geekcom comes in for me to check out the Intel NUC 13 because this is going to be at the cornerstone of all of the graphic production we do here at UFD Tech. See, one of the things that we desperately need when it comes to the work that we do here at UFD Tech is power efficiency. Because of the fact that our team works in South Africa where they have extreme load shedding and they have regular power outages, just because they have a battery backup solution doesn't mean that they're going to be able to complete their work. So we need something power efficient but also powerful and the NUC 13 really hits this hole. So in its size, it's a perfect replacement for the Mac Mini because it's absolutely tiny and it even has VESA mounting for you to slap onto the back of your monitor. On the inside, it has a 13th Gen i7 1360p and this thing has 12 cores, 16 threads, and that's four performance cores and eight efficiency cores clocked it up to 4.6 gigahertz turbo. If you want it something a little bit more mid-tier, they do offer it with the i5 1340p. Now you're not getting any sort of discrete graphics in this setup. However, you can add a graphics card to this, and I'll talk about that in a second. You do have the Iris XE graphics that are baked in. Now you can get it with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, whereas the one Geekcom sent me has 32 gigs of DDR4 3200. You can get that down to 16 or potentially even go bare bones when you pick this up from Geekcom. The SSD, my model came with one terabyte, but you can swap it out yourself as well, getting in the bare bones kit and potentially upgrading it even further. You also have the latest connectivity features coming in with Wi-Fi 6E, AX211, and Bluetooth 5.3, and this thing can even fit a two and a half inch hard drive. You can slot one of those in here if you want. It's actually remarkably easy to get to the internals of this thing. It only has four screws on the underneath and then you just simply pop it out and you have access to swapping out the RAM, swapping out the SSD, potentially upgrading it for anything that you're doing down the line. But it also has a ton of connectivity ports, which is gonna be great for using it as part of our production. On the front, you have two USB-A 10 gigabit per second ports as well as a headset jack and a power button. Got a Kensington lock on the left side and then on the back side, you have the power in dual HDMI 2.1 ports, dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, a two and a half gig Ethernet port, and two more USB ports right there on the back. So not only do you get two displays out of that HDMI 2.1 ports that are included, but you can also get two more using those USB-C ports to get up to a quad display out of such a small device. But because it has the latest 13th gen setup, you are getting a lot of cords out of it. As I mentioned, this is 12 cords and 16 threads. And in productivity performance, I was able to render out an 11 minute 4K video in just 26 minutes while only drawing 65 watts of power for the entire time. And this thing staying nearly whisper quiet while under that load. And now while 26 minutes isn't a record, the fact that something like this can easily handle a 4K timeline in Premiere Pro and then also render it out in under half an hour while drawing such little power is the exact scenario where I think this is gonna be tremendously useful for us because when the power goes out in South Africa, you want to have your battery backup run as long as possible. If we can get a full video rendered out in 26 minutes while only using 65 watts of power, Reese being able to use it for things like Photoshop and Lightroom, where Intel's 13th gen processor actually really shines, then I think we have a chance of defeating these rolling blackouts he's doing. Seriously, I can't tell you how much of a struggle load shedding has been for us to bring you our regular videos with them having between four and eight hours of total power loss in a given day. But then when when it comes to gaming, nobody really expects the Iris XE graphics to put out a whole lot. And if you are wanting to take this seriously for gaming, that's where you're gonna wanna use the Thunderbolt ports to use it in an eGPU dock, which thankfully Reese already has, and he has a 3060 Ti slotted into it. So we'll get better gaming performance out of this than I did just using the integrated GPU, but it's still not like, unplayable. In a game like CSGO at 1080p high, able to average 72 FPS, there was a little bit of dipping when it comes to the smokes happening, which dropped the 0.1% lows down to 11.4. But if you lowered your quality settings, you could easily stay close to 60 out of just such a small box. And then in a AAA title like Cyberpunk 2077, at 1080p low, we were able to average 25 FPS with dips down to 7.5. But then at 720p low, we were able to average 30 
77.2 with dips down to nine. So it's not quite ready for AAA gaming, but it is ready for more casual esports games and even checking it in Reese's favorite game to stream as of late, Genshin Impact. At 1080p medium, we we're able to average 45.4, which is gonna be perfectly playable for him to actually stream. And the fact that this has 12 cores and it has Intel's Quick Sync, you can use it for a streaming box. And in fact, all of the streaming that we do over on Twitch is run off of an Intel NUC. It just happens to be 12th gen instead of the 13th gen, but this NUC 13 does deliver a ton of power for such a small size and really brings a lot of benefit for people who need a device that's small in size, potentially can be hidden behind a monitor and then also is super efficient while dealing out performance that we haven't really seen before in a box this size. And in case you're interested in what's the best gaming performance that you can get out of a little mini PC like this, Geekcom's actually gonna be sponsoring an upcoming video where we check out the AS6 from them, powered by ASUS compared to the NUC 13. So get subscribed for that. But I'm actually really excited about the NUC 13. All of the benefits of Intel's newest technology in a form factor and a power envelope that we can tremendously benefit from. And you can check it out at the Geekcom website right now. And you can use the pre-sale coupon new off 50. The model as I have it specs came in at 999, but you can get it with a bare bones setup at 649. Or if you want the i5 with only 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, you can get that for 809. Again, check out the NUC 13 over at Geekcom. Use the coupon new off 50 while it's in pre-sale. And if you can't get it after that, it's still at a very good price. Big thanks again to Geekcom for sponsoring today's video. I'm about to take this to Reese in Taiwan because we're going to Computex together and then he'll be able to use this as his daily driver in South Africa. Big thanks again to Geekcom for sponsoring today's video.